All right, so for this video, we're going to be looking at energy conservation. And the problem here is a basic pendulum. And we're asked to find the potential gravitational energy before the ball is released, as well as the velocity at this point at the bottom of its path. So let's start out with A. We know that the gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh, mass times gravity, times the height that your mass is resting at. But there's a problem here. We don't know this height. We're not given that. We're given the string length, but we are not given the height that the mass is above the ground. So we've got to solve for that trigonometry trigonometrically. So I'm going to redraw the situation here. Okay. So we have our string length, but we don't have our HL but we do have the angle that this string is making. So we can break down this total side length into D, which is the distance the ball is to the top, and then to our H, which is what we're looking for. So how can we find our, our D here? So we have cosine of theta equals D over the, the side length, L. Solving for D, we get L cosine of theta. Okay, and we know that our H is just the total side length minus D. So we get L minus L cosine of theta. And factoring out an L, we get L1 minus cosine of theta. So this is good, because now we have the height and we can just solve this into our equation here. And you get H, which is equal to 0 0.25 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared multiplied by L1 minus cosine of theta. Okay, and plugging this into our calculator, we get 0.25. We get that our gravitational potential energy at that point is 0 0.4096 joules. So that is the potential energy at this point. 0.40096 joules. Okay, so now let's go into B. What is the velocity at the bottom? So we need to somehow figure out a relation between kinetic energy, which deals with velocity, and our potential energy, because we know that those are the two energies that we're going to be dealing with in this problem. So let's start out by looking at the word energy here. We know that the sum of works is equal to the change in kinetic energy. But how can we rewrite this to include the, uh, the potential energies? So we have two different types of work. We're conservative plus our non-conservative work is equal to our delta K. So let's solve for our non-conservative work. It equals our negative conservative work plus our delta k. And we know that negative conservative work is just equal to the change in potential energy. So we have that work non-conservative equals change in potential energy plus the change in kinetic. So this is an equation that we can use to relate both of these uh, two energy properties. I'll write up here. Okay, because we're only dealing with gravity, the gravitational potential energy, we know that the non-conservative work is going to be zero. We have no forces that are going to be attributing in a non-conservative way, such as friction. When friction moves along, it loses energy to heat, which is why it's a non-conservative force. So we can take this to be zero, which equals 
delta u plus delta k. So let's expand these out into the, their respective final and initial states. We have that uf plus kf minus u initial plus k initial. Okay, so let's bring over this term over here. We have u initial plus k initial equals u final plus k final. So let's plug in our, our introduce for this equation into this by just looking at it. We know that we have a initial gravitational potential energy in the H, which we found in part A, but there's no initial kinetic energy because our ball is at rest. It has zero velocity. So this term is zero. And once our ball reaches the bottom, we know that it has zero potential energy because it has a zero height. So this term we can take to be zero. But at the bottom, this ball will have a kinetic energy. It's all of its potential energy is going to be transferred into kinetics. So we will have a final kinetic state, which gives us MDH equals one half MVF squared. So this equation is essential because it shows exactly how mechanical energy is conserved. Our gravitational potential energy at the top is equal to our kinetic energy at the bottom. So when you think all the uh, potential energy is stored at the top, as it makes its way down, it's, it transfers more and more over to kinetic. And once it goes back up, that kinetic energy transfers back to potential. So we have MDH equals one half MDF squared. So we're trying to solve for velocity. Let's move our terms around. We did, well, we can cancel out ends because we have ends on both sides. So we have GH equals one half VF squared. Let's bring over the two. Two GH equals VF squared. We can uh, square root both terms. We get VF equals the square root of two GH. Okay, let's put that into our calculator real quick. We get the square root of 2 times 9.8 times the height that we found in the first part, which I'll rewrite. We had L1 minus cosine of theta. Our L being 1.5 and our angle being 27. We get that the final velocity is 1.79 meters per second. So once this ball gets uh, released from rest, it will travel down, gaining kinetic energy, and right at the bottom, it will have a final velocity of 1.79 meters. So this problem helped relate the two uh, kinetic and potential energy, showing how mechanical energy is conserved.